The eel has been considered for a very long time to be an essential food fish all over the world, particularly in Japan. Additionally, the eel has been utilized as a test fish in many different areas of fish physiology. Despite this, there has been a significant cause for concern regarding the declining eel resources during the past few years. This is why this particular fish is being given so much attention, especially in China, Taiwan, and Japan. But how are the eel really farmed? What are its stages of development? And how long does it take to mature? Let's explore this in today's video. Aquaculture is an industry that is practiced all over the world, and one of its subsets is eel farming. Eels, whose meat is high in protein and other nutrients, are one of the company's specialties, and they are grown for market sale. A potentially lucrative business venture is rearing juvenile eels until they reach the size at which they may be sold for their meat. The industry is believed to be worth more than $1 billion, and eel farms produce approximately 60% of the eel flesh consumed in the United States. Eel farms can be found in many different nations, However, Japan is the nation that produces the most of them. Other notable producers include countries in Europe and Scandinavia, as well as China, Taiwan, Australia, and Morocco. The farms begin the process by sourcing stock, which is often obtained through the purchase of wild glass eels. These eels are then sold and utilized to replace the farm population. Eels, for those who do not know, are a type of fish distinguished by spherical, elongated, and slender bodies. They are a carnivorous species known to live for a very long time. Although they spend most of their lives in freshwater, they migrate to the ocean to reproduce. Young eels can live in the freshwater of rivers and streams for up to 12 years if they are male and up to 18 years if they are female. This is the typical lifespan of young eels. However, there are certain species that have been known to live considerably longer. Once an eel has reached sexual maturity, it migrates into the open ocean to find spawning grounds for reproduction. After an eel lays eggs, they are carried along by the current of the water as they transform into larvae, and after around 18 months, they have matured into what are known as glass eels. These are juvenile eels, which can be identified by their translucent appearance and lack of physical development. When eels have reached the glass stage, they are much closer to the beaches and can be caught in nets at this point. When they are sold, the young eels, also referred to as fingerlings, sometimes are taken back to the farms to replace the supply. Since young glass eels typically originate from the wild, there is a greater possibility that they may be infected with parasites or diseases. This is why it is essential that they are isolated in a quarantine facility for several weeks and thoroughly examined for any indications of disease or insect infestation. Transitioning from saltwater to freshwater also contributes to the natural elimination of several parasites. Having said that, there could still be many diseases that come with the fish, and it needs to be taken care of. After quarantine, fingerlings can be raised in ponds or recirculating tanks. For best growth and health, the water temperature should be between 23 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees Celsius. Eels may thrive better in ponds in hotter areas because the water is warmer. In cooler climes, the tank system is most prevalent. However, solar or geothermal heating can also be used to heat the water in ponds. Due to the pond's increased size, they may generate more eels and more farm profit. Most intense eel farming uses recirculating tanks. However, this system needs a lot of clean water to recirculate and clean the tanks. Electricity is also needed to heat and pump the water. Tanks are commonly composed of concrete or fiberglass, and filtration systems remove feces and food waste from the water. Using a recirculating system allows farmers to manage the eel's environment for optimal growth. Valley culture is another approach to growing eels. Instead of ponds or tanks, farmers cultivate eels in coastal locations using natural lagoons and a weir to keep them contained until they reach the right size. Grading eels in ponds or tanks can reduce cannibalism and food rivalry. However, the eels must be graded and sorted every six weeks to avoid larger eels from consuming the smaller ones. Taiwan first exported young eels to Japanese aquaculture businesses in the 1950s. These elvers were caught along Taiwan's west coast. Due to the island being the main supplier to Japan in the 1980s and early 1990s, its market share reached an all-time high of 70% in 1993, 
contributing $605 million to Taiwan's economy at the time. The cultivation of eels in Taiwan began to gain traction, aided immensely by the technological advancements in this sector. It not only brought in a significant amount of foreign currency for the nation, but it also helped the economy of the fishing town thrive and made it easier for fishermen to make a living. The value of the breeding industry hit its all-time high in 1991 when it generated a revenue of $560 million in the United States, equivalent to more than half of the supply on the Japanese market at the time. By 2007, the eel had surpassed all other farmed fish in terms of its value as an export commodity, accounting for 13.3% of total exports that year. After this came tilapia at 5.3% and milkfish at 1.3% of the total. Eel farming currently occupies a total of 2,313 hectares, and more than 90% of the product is sent to Japan.